we are all well aware of the more popular NHL records like most points, most goals, best winning records, all those positive and impressive feats. However, there are some records you may have never heard of. Records that are maybe not often spoken about because they are just downright embarrassing. Don't get me wrong, playing at the NHL level takes an absurd amount of skill and talent. But throughout the history of the NHL, we've seen some players and teams put up some embarrassing performances. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the 7 most embarrassing NHL records. Doug Sotar No goalie or pro athlete has ever had a harder day at work than goaltender Doug Sotar. Facing off against the Minnesota North Stars in 1981, the Winnipeg Jets netminder allowed 15 goals in an obvious loss which shattered the previous record of 11 goals against. What's interesting about this record is that Sotar actually didn't let in his first goal until five minutes left into the first period. But before the first was over, he had let two go by him. Then things got real messy. Sotar and the Jets let in eight goals against throughout the second period and then five more during the third period. The Jets lost the game 15-2 and the North Stars tallied 51 shots on goal. Now I know what you're thinking, why wasn't he pulled? Well, here's what Jets coach at the time Tom Watt had to say after the game. It's a two-edged sword. If you take him out, aren't you saying he's to blame? Collectively, we were terrible, terrible defensively. Everybody has to share the responsibility, not just the goalie, not just the defenseman. Coach Watt was right about that. It's not all on the goalie. It's a team game, and the team should own that loss. Which brings us to our next embarrassing record. The 1944 New York Rangers. It was January 23rd, 1944, and the New York Rangers were visiting the Detroit Red Wings, where the Red Wings would absolutely lay the smack down on the visiting Rangers. The New York Rangers lost so bad that no other team has ever lost this bad since. The game started with a bang as the Red Wings put up two goals in the opening frame. Then in the second period, that's where the floodgates opened and the Rangers let in another five goals. And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, it certainly did as the Red Wings added another eight goals to the score sheet just in the third period alone. While Rangers goalie Ken McCauley led in 16 goals on 58 shots, Detroit had their rookie goalie Connie Dion record his first ever NHL shutout as he only had to make 9 saves throughout the game's entirety. This loss demoralized the Rangers so badly that they went on a losing streak that lasted the remainder of the season. Mike Sillinger now, it's not news that being traded or having to move city to city is just part of the game and although it can be difficult to relocate, it just comes with the territory. However, how many times can someone be traded or signed to a different team before they call it quits? Well, let's take a look at Mike Sillinger's career and find out. Playing a total of 1,049 games in the NHL, tallying 548 points, Sillinger started his career in Detroit after being drafted in the 1989 draft 11th overall. He would have to wait until the 92-93 season before making the roster and the centerman spent two seasons with the Red Wings scoring 21 points in his rookie season and then 29 in his sophomore season. Then in the 1994-95 season, Mike saw his first trade of his career after just playing 13 games with the Red Wings. They shipped him off to Anaheim where he spent one and a half years before being sent over to the Vancouver Canucks in the 95-96 season. From there, Mike stayed and hung around for two and a half seasons, where he scored a career-high 37 points in the 96-97 season. But, of course, following the trend of not being able to stay in one place too long, Mike made his way over to the Flyers, where he played 52 games split between one and a half seasons, before being dealt over to the Tampa Bay Lightning in the 98-99 season. Jesus, this is making me tired just reading it. Can you imagine how Sillinger felt? From Tampa, Mike ended up going to play in Florida, then Ottawa where he only played 13 games. Then in the 2000-2001 season, he started off with the Columbus Blue Jackets and played the most games he's ever played with one team, reaching 80 games played and putting up close to his career high 43 points. And then in the following season, Mike actually stayed in Columbus and played 75 games and got himself another 43 points. Wow, finally making himself comfortable in a lineup and raking in some points, now he can just relax and be happy knowing he's a solid contributor to his team. 
Well, that was wrong because in the 03-04 season, he landed in Phoenix, and from there he moved to St. Louis, Nashville, and finally ended his career with the New York Islanders. Now, Mike did have a lengthy career in the NHL, but during his 17-year career, he was traded a total of 9 times and played for a total of 12 different teams. I don't think anyone will ever match this record ever again. The 1995 Vancouver Canucks when the Vancouver Canucks were visiting the Winnipeg Jets on April 7, 1995, a record was set for the most shorthanded goals in one NHL game that still stands strong today. Allowing a shorthanded goal against can be demoralizing, but as a team, you have to take your lumps and focus on the rest of the power play you have left to make up for it. Unfortunately for the Canucks, the Winnipeg Jets just had their number and scored a record of four shorthanded goals in one NHL game, taking the win 7-4. Keith Kachuk grabbed two of the four, while Nelson Emerson and Daryl Shannon added one each. At the time, the NHL record was two shorthanded goals, so not only did the Jets double it, but three of those goals came within a five-minute span. Ken Danico We've heard of players going through many games without a goal, but the Devils' legendary defenseman takes the cake going 255 games without scoring a goal until he finally put one in the net against the Buffalo Sabres, solidifying this embarrassing NHL record. This goal breaking the drought came in October of 2002, and his previous goal came against the Canucks in February of 1999. Danico surpassed Rich Pilon, who had held the undesirable record at 245 games. Despite this disappointing stat, Danico managed to have a great career being relied on for his great leadership and hard-nosed style of play. Danico was a very popular player being nicknamed Mr. Devil because of his franchise leading 1,283 games played. Speaking of the Devils, you're going to want to hear this next one. The 2018 New Jersey Devils. Own goals aren't very common, but in any given season, we're bound to see a few players make these embarrassing plays that have them wanting to crawl into a hole. Obviously, these aren't intentional acts and mistakes happen, sure. But when it happens multiple times in a single game, then you have to question what in the world is going on. On December 9th, 2018, the New Jersey Devils were taking on the Ducks in Anaheim in what was a complete roller coaster of a game. The Devils took the lead and went up 1-0, but the Ducks answered back, tying it up. Then, the first own goal happened. The Ducks centered the puck in the slot, Devils goalie Schneider slid out of the crease wide left, and Devils defenseman Stefan Nozin, trying to intercept the pass, deflects the puck into the open net. So now the Ducks go up 2-1. All right, well, let's shake that off and get back to it. And what do you know? The Devils put that behind them and not only tied it back up, but scored two consecutive goals, taking the lead back 3-2. to two. Well, the Ducks would tie it up, and then the Devils would answer back, taking what was their third lead of the game with a score of 4-3. to three. Then the second own goal happened. The Ducks dumped the puck in on the net and Devils D-man Lovejoy would try to grab the puck, but it just ended up deflecting off of it and winding up in the back of the Devils net. Now the game is tied at four. Fast forward to six minutes left in the third period, still tied at four. The Ducks take a shot on the net, but Schneider makes the initial save with the rebound popping up into the air. In an attempt to clear the puck as it's in mid-air, Devils' Andy Green takes a swat at it and shelves the puck right into his own net. Now that is downright embarrassing, making that the Devils' third own goal in one single game. Greg Jolly Let's go back in time to 1974. The Washington Capitals were in their inaugural NHL season and drafted Gregory Jolly, a left-handed defenseman, first overall. The GM of the Capitals at the time referred to Jolly as the next Bobby Orr and had extremely high hopes for the young D-man to lead the brand new NHL franchise to the promised land. Well, after playing 365 games in the NHL over the course of nine seasons, Jolly was out of the NHL by the age of 28, and let's call it like it is, he was a draft bust. In that first season with the Caps, the entire team put up the worst overall record in the history of the NHL with eight wins, 67 losses, and five ties. And if having the worst NHL record in the history of the league isn't embarrassing enough, 
get this. Greg Jolly had the worst plus minus ever recorded in a single NHL game. On March 15th, 1975, the Capitals faced off against the Pittsburgh Penguins and took an absolute beating, losing the game 12 to 1. And on top of that, Jolly finished off with a whopping minus 9. Now, obviously, the team was going through growing pains, and this just isn't on Jolly. And personally, I don't think a player can be defined by a plus minus stat. However, if you're a minus 9 in one single game, you are certainly part of the problem, and you are not the next Bobby Orr. Thanks for watching our videos. Don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.